Hey Floss Tube, this is Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I'm back again with you this weekend to share with you a few finishes and a few finishing plans. So as many of you already know that we're right in the middle of Stitch Mania 2020. And for this Stitch Mania, I decided to join in and I'm calling it this a little mania because I'm working only on small pieces, things that I can finish in just a couple of days and get that pump of excitement because I'm getting a small finish, but also that way I'm not carrying anything over from Stitch Mania 2020 outside of the month of May. So I'm gonna share with you what I've finished this week. Um, I have some finishing plans to share with you as well. This week I've once again worked on some of the Foxwood Crossing sleds. This is the Snowy Barn series, and I've finished the three. Um, the one pattern has three different patterns for three different sleds. So I have finished those three, three barns. This is number two. And then this is number three. And I think this one is my favorite one, which is the second one I showed, but this one is the third one. And they're really nice. Um, it had a little back stitching in it. And when I, the first two that I did, let me show you. I did each individual square, all but the X on the barn door. I did that with long satin, uh, long stitch. And so when I got to the third one, I thought, you know what? I really like these. I'm probably gonna order more to stitch for the tree this year. And so on this one, I decided to do those long back stitching, back stitches. Instead of doing it over just one, one square, I did it over the two or three that was called for in the pattern. In the bottom of the barn, on the barn door, it, it was, went over, I think, about five, five or six stitches. The only thing is, on the top and bottom of the windows, because they're basically just one stitch over the top and the bottom seal of the windows, the back stitch kind of gets lost. But overall, I actually like this back stitching better. So I have three more of these that gives me a total of six. So I have these six small finishes, which like I said, I'm in love with these. I've had these for a while, um, just like most stash. I'm, I'm more of a collector of stash, stash. I collect way more, way quicker than I stitch and finish. I've really enjoyed working with these. They're so easy to finish up. Um, I'm hoping to have a tree full this year. So I did go um, order, I think it was three more patterns this week. And then I found the sleds on, I didn't find them online. I did find them out on Amazon. And they were a pack of, I believe there were seven in the pack, six or either seven. And they were like $26, which come out to like $4 and some change a piece. And so I got more sleds. So um, I won't have enough sleds to stitch out all the patterns that I have, but I can get them in the, in the long run. I already have the paper here. I have several sheets of the perforated paper, which is what it calls for. And I've got plenty of DMC and I'm working strictly from that. So um, I'm excited. I'm excited to get those in. I hope they'll come in sometime this week. I also um, finished the, this up this week as well. This is... It's the Floral Cup Pincushion by Samplers Not Forgotten. This come as a kit. Um, I think it was a market exclusive for um, market of 2019. And I had had Lorraine Rags to Stitches. She works at a shop in Atlanta and I knew that they were going and I had her pick this up for me. Is that right? No. <laughs> Lorraine did get it, but it was slightly aftermarket. Uh, she let me know that they had them at um, where she works, and I had her get one for me. And she brought it to me um, at a stitch we attended together. I'm sorry I have not wrinkled it yet, but this is it. 
And I read on, on, the, on the instructions for the piece that it was actually one of the motifs that were taken from one of Sampler Not Forgotten's uh, samplers that were released last year. Hold on just a second so I can look and tell you exactly which one that was. I, I know that I had the pattern as well, but did not. The floral motif was taken from the LW Motif Sampler 1821. I believe that's the one that um, Carol Saltbox Stitcher did, uh, hosted a stitch along to for her daughter. And this motif is taken from that sampler. So the kit also came with a heart-shaped waxer, um, three counting pins, some ribbon, and a cute little cup. So it's like a child size, um, what do you call this? Enameled uh, metal, so enamelware cup. And then I'm not gonna take the waxer out, but here's the waxer and I think it's absolutely beautiful. And then there are the count counting pins. Uh, they were stuck in the fabric and I didn't want to lose them, so I just stuck them into the little baggie that the waxer was in. And he, of course, here's the ribbon. So I believe it to be silk ribbon. So I have everything um, here to finish this up. And so hopefully by the next video, I will have a finish on this. And of course, it'll be um, covered over the top, the pin cushion and uh, this ribbon will be around the edges of it within the cup. So it shouldn't take a, a lot of finagling to get it finished and fixed up. And I can't wait to show it all to you. But uh, once again, this is floral cup, floral pin cushion cup by Sampler's Not Forgotten. And those are my finishes for this week. So I did have four and they were all small. I did continue to work on one of my focus pieces. I still have not pick and pick the fall back up, but I will. And this is Birds of a Feather Black, by Blackbird Designs. I started this in Stitch Mania 2018 with Jen of Jen Stitching Niche. And this has been laboring away in a project bag for a while. So I picked this up a few about a month ago and Jen and I kind of ch challenged each other to work on this every Friday so that we can get a finish. And there are other stitchers that have joined in with us, which has been great. Um, Becky Sots for Mom has already finished hers and um, I believe Andrea Deep Fried Cupcake, I believe she finished hers this weekend too. But this is mine. So I've got two sides of the border completed since you last saw it. Um, I worked a lot up here in this corner, so this corner is finished. And I, I started the fourth lollipop flower there. And I have the stem in, so I'm gonna work on, on there from that this coming week. And I have been really excited more. This, is, this has been the most fun mania for me so far. This is the third one I've participated in. And I've not enjoyed them before because I would always have lots of whips afterwards and I still have many of those whips. And it's, for me personally, um, I love to stitch, I'm more of a process stitcher, but I tend to stitch on large pieces. And because of that, most of what I have in my stash is larger pieces. So when it comes to Stitch Mania, I didn't have a lot of small things to start. Well, it never really occurred to me up until this year to start on smaller things. But what ends up happening, I have these huge pro projects that's gonna take months to finish and I started them in Mania and there was just no way to finish them with them in Mania. And the feeling of having all those whips um, for the past few years is kind of weighing in on me. And so my goal that I've shared before this year was to go out of this year with less whips than I had at the beginning of the year. And so far I'm right on goal with that. I'm not keeping myself from buying stash and I'm, I'm not um, keeping myself, um, I'm not allowing myself to make starts because I am. 
but the thought of going out with less than I had coming into 2020 has been great. Um, with Mania so far, I originally set the goal of starting and finishing 10 projects, and that gave me three days for each project. And as of right now, I have actually finished nine projects. I will make a start today on my 10th project, and this is another Foxwood Crossing, but this is a larger one. This is River Road Church. And as I said, I'm not buying any new threads or anything for these patterns. I'm pulling what I have from Stash. So I have things on, on thread drops. I have things that are on bobbins. And th these are actually the colors for this piece. I don't know how good that's going to look for you, but <laughs> this is it. So uh, it comes with the piece of perforated paper. It's already inside. So as you can see, it's not a really big piece, but I have that. And then I have my, my uh, Mania finishes from last week, and this was one of them. This is ABC by Sue Hillis Designs. And this is a complimentary chart for a purchase I had made from her channel. So for those of you that don't know, let me grab something really quick. In June, I'll start it on June 1st. I'm hosting a stitch along for ne the Needlework Sampler by Sue Hillis. There is a hashtag and it's just uh, Needlework Sampler, Sampler SAL. And this week, I got notification that Sue Hillis was wanting to join in, wanting more information about the stitch along. So a lot of stitchers had reached out to me or tagged me in posts. So thank you all for that. And let me know that Sue Hillis was wanting to join in. So we now have a Facebook page for the Needlework Sampler Stitch Along. As I said, that's joining um, starting on June 1st. There are several members already um, requested to join, but I will put the link for the Stitch Along group below, but just know that Sue Hillis is already in the mix. She's already on the channel. She'll be um, touching out, watching our progress and, and giving us maybe some pointers if we need it, but just cheer, she's a cheerleader on the sidelines, which I think is just amazing. So if you're interested um, in joining the Stitch Along, there, I will link below Sue Hillis's website. Um, Jen of Jen Stitching Niche had also agreed to get patterns for us um, for the stitch along. I will link her below as well. And Becky from Socks for Mom here on Floss Tube and on Instagram has also made the cutest little tomato pin cushion scissors fobs, um, not scissors fobs, thread rings um, for us if you want to take a look there. So I'll link them all below. And when I went to order the charm pack, because as you can see, there are buttons in the pattern, but there are also charms in the pattern. And when I ordered those from Sue's website, this is where, that's where I got the complimentary chart. So someone had asked me last week if it was a free pattern, they couldn't find it online. It is not a free pattern per se. It is a complimentary chart with a purchase from Sue's website. Also no, I had someone ask me if there were specialty stitches in this piece, and there are. But don't be intimidated by those stitches. Um, she gives wonderful, wonderful instructions on the back of the pattern for the different stitches that are within the pattern. And they are open eyelet, rice stitch, sheaf stitch so there's nothing nothing that you can't do and there's a pulled a pulled thread which is just pulled thread is just basically what it says it's pulled thread you're going to use your thread to go over more than two linen threads like you normally would and you're just going to pull the thread to, to, to distort the uh, fabric weave a little bit which gives you the look so there's nothing in here that you can't do and that's going to be the great thing about having sue join in with us you you've got her wealth of knowledge you can ask her you can reach out to me if you don't know how to do the stitches i will do my best to help but when you're in a stitch along and you're lucky enough to have a facebook group like we do 
there's going to be stitchers of varying degrees of knowledge of how to do certain stitches. And so don't hesitate to reach out to your brother and sister stitchers and ask them how to do it. This piece, I don't anticipating it take me, taking me very long. I think it's beautiful. And I may have shared it before, I can't remember, but this piece used to be hanging up in my local cross stitch shop before it went out of business. And they had two versions of it. One, is, of course, is as it's charted in the reds, and one was done in the teal blue, which is a very popular color right now. So also don't hesitate to change it up and make it yours. If red is not really is a color that you want as the dominant color, choose another color. There's a yellow in the pattern. There's a blue then the the tilly green so just make it your own go for it i also last week finished this piece and it was heart and hand tomato tart so this one is finished in one of the hardware bowls um that are offered i can't remember who puts them out now anywho I decided, it put it in my mind, the name of it, Tomato Tart, instead of buying one of the hardware bowls to put it into a tart pan. So I ordered those, if you remember, I shared with everyone last week that I ordered some tart pans. So I ordered four different tart pans and they come in this silver color. And I thought that I would possibly paint them and use that to finish my tomato tart piece into. Now there were, a few years ago, there were some, Paulette Stewart had released some designs where she had finished a piece in this way, in a tart pan. And so I had that file back in my toolbox, my Stitcher's toolbox in my mind, as well as, like I said, when I hit, the name of the piece was tomato tart, that popped into my mind of these tart pans. So the hardware bowl that this called for was a four inch, and so that's what I got here. I got a four inch tart pan. I've also decided I'm going to paint this. I do have some spray paint that I used to, um, I refinished an old dresser. And instead of buying new har hardware um, for the uh, handles and things to open the drawers, I got some copper colored paint and painted those, spray painted those with it. And I think I'm gonna do that with this as well. I was, I'm looking behind you to look at those drawer handles um, because that was an old dresser that I repurposed for up here and I'm, you know, sanded it down and, and restained it and sanded it. And it looks brand new, but it's, it's very old. But I redid those drawer pulls and I'm thinking of doing this in the same way because I'm pretty sure I still have that paint. And I think it'll look really good with this. And I think that the color, the copper color is going to pull the colors from the fabric. So I did get those to finish that. And I picked up some ribbon and rick rack as well. And I'm going to show you the colors. I've not decided on any of them yet. I like the more aged yellowed look of the, of the white here. And this is more creamy colored rick rack. Let me see if I can hold that together. So the red is much more red than the tomato itself. And I'm kind of leaning to this, but I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to go with it, but I will definitely fit it, figure it out. And some of these I may wait, may wait till after mania to finish them because it seems like I have not really had any time to stitch. Um, this week work is, is work is good. I want a day that is full of work so the work day goes faster. But the work day is going fast and it's elongated. <laughs> oh, that's not the right word. It's a longer work day. I've had some really long work days this week and last week and with it being mania, usually things are starting to, to calm down, slow down a little bit um, for, the, for the summer months. But for some reason it's, uh, with the with the state of everything today i think so many people are home that it's affecting work as well and and, and i'm in no way complaining about it it's just that i'm not finding the time that i normally would have to do these finishes and things so um things will eventually calm down what else do i have i also went to a local um farm 
and recently and picked some strawberries with my husband and I also come out of there with some blueberries and I kept this and it's just a little pint container that I thought that I would use um, for possibly putting some strawberries in by the end of the summer. And I'm not talking about fresh ones, I'm talking about stitched ones. So I, I just kept that, it's just paper. Um, the blueberries didn't, you know, juice on it anywhere, so it's still in really good shape. And so I'm gonna hang on to that. I also have the three, I'm gonna share with you again, the three other smalls that I may make a start on before the end of Mania. And this is Ode to the Ort by um, Brenda Gervais. And then my lady's needle, this is Joyful Yuletide Spool. And then this is Heartstring Samplery T-Ball Ornaments. So I'm excited about those. And then this past week, I um, hosted a giveaway uh, for Caroline Behringer by Summer House Stitch Works. And this piece was sent to, be my, to me by my friend Donna for me to give away on my channel. So um, I notified the winner yesterday and her name was, I wanna say it was Donna Mitchell. So she's already responded to me. She responded to me yesterday and here's the pattern and I can't wait to get that out to her. So if you're, you're watching this video again, I got your response, just please respond to me again with your mailing address. Um, I did respond back, but I haven't received that second response. So if you will just send me your mailing address, I will get that into the mail to you this week. So this week I'd like to do two, two more giveaways. One of them is going to be my floral cup pin cushion kit. And this is all that's left. This is the pattern. It was actually rolled up into that little cup that I showed you. So you'll have to come by your own little cup, but I want to pass this piece on. So if you're interested in this, um, have, having this pattern, please be 18 years old, unless you have your parents' permission. Uh, please be a subscriber, and I would like you to comment below. Um, with this being a floral cup, just let me know if you garden or not, whether it's vegetable or flower garden, and because I know this is a busy season for all of us that do enjoy those things, so just let me know below if you're a gardener or not, and um, I'll get that out. I will choose a winner next Friday. Uh, for Friday or Saturday for my video next Sunday and the other thing we're coming upon Memorial Day here in the US Memorial Day will be um, Sunday the tw uh, Sunday Monday the 26th that just happens to be my daughter Jordan's birthday as well and I thought that I would give this away in a video and several videos back I had made um, some project bags and I found these in a store, and they're actually placemats that I just folded into an envelope, to folded over two times, sewed up the side, and made little pouches, envelope pouches out of these. So with the stars and stripes being one of the focus pieces of um, Memorial Day, remembering those who had who had um, given their life. I want to give this away so if you are I would like for those that enter the giveaways to be US citizens I do, citizens excuse me for that US residents um, for this piece and I will do my best to get this out to you in the mail again um, on Tuesday after Memorial Day because I will make the announcement and the drawing on next Saturday so that's gonna be the Envelope pouch and the floral pin cushion. So t on this one, talk to me about your garden. And on this one, um, just mention our stars and stripes, what it means to you. There you go. And I think that's going to be it for now. I hope to have another giveaway on my next video. Um, 
I'm going to give away a couple more patterns. And I'm hoping to pop in this coming Wednesday and do a little stitch with me video. I haven't done one. I've only done one or two of those and I'd like to do another one because I have been asked to do a review on a, um, a lamp. So I would like to do both at the same time, do a little stitch with me. So um, you can see how I stitch. I do get questions on that at times. So that'll answer those questions. And then at the same time, I can also kind of um, give my review of that magnifying lamp. So I think that's all I've got for at the moment. I wanna thank everyone for watching. I wanna thank everyone for the kind comments. I do look forward to those comments. That's what keeps me coming back every week. Um, I I'm glad you're here with me. I hope you find something that'll bring you back again next week. And until then, hugs and stitches. Bye-bye.